In this video, we're going to take a look at the difference between melting and dissolving. So we'll look at the major differences, some examples of each, and then we'll look at the similarities. What's the same about melting and dissolving? So let's just start off with this first row right here. When we talk about melting, we're talking about a solid changing into a liquid. This little S and little L, that's how we represent solid and liquid in chemistry. So a good example of melting would be chocolate. We take a block of solid chocolate here, we heat it up, and we end up with this liquid chocolate here. So we have a solid changing to a liquid. Here's the important thing though. It's still chocolate. This is chocolate and this is chocolate. It's the same substance. We only have one substance involved. For dissolving, we're normally talking about a solid dissolving into a liquid. So the solid is different from the liquid. A good example would be sugar into water. So we take some sugar cubes, we put them in water, the sugar, that's called the solute. The water, that's the solvent. The solvent dissolves the solute, and we end up with a mixture, a homogeneous mixture, and we call that a solution. So when we're talking about dissolving, we have solute, solvent, and solution, three very specific terms, and we have more than one substance. The solute is different than the solvent. Sugar, that's the solute. Water, that's the solvent. And then the solution, it's sugar water. The key idea is that melting, we only have one type of substance. Dissolving, we have a solute and a solvent, two different substances. When we want to melt something, we need heat. So think about our chocolate. We have our chocolate here. We heat it up and we end up with the chocolate melting, becoming a liquid. For dissolving, sometimes we'll have heat given off. It'll feel hot. Sometimes it'll absorb heat from the water. It'll feel cold. It really depends on the substance. But when we're talking melting, we're always going to have heat energy required. Something that not many people realize is that gases and liquids, they can dissolve. So oxygen, it dissolves in water. That's how fishes breathe. So we can have gases, liquids, or solids involved in dissolving. For melting, we always start with that solid. Finally, we can reverse melting by cooling. You let the chocolate cool down, it'll change back to a solid. For dissolving, we need to let the solvent evaporate. So think of our sugar water. If all the water evaporates, we'll be left with our sugar. So we can reverse these processes in different ways. Melting, we let it cool. Dissolving, we let the water or the solvent evaporate. Let's look briefly at the similarities between melting and dissolving. So there are a few similarities. First, they're both physical changes, and both can be easily reversed. So again, with melting, we just let it cool. It'll change back to a solid. Dissolving, we let the solvent evaporate. Both involve a liquid phase. Melting, it's the solid changing to a liquid. Dissolving, we have the solvent, that's our liquid. We put the solute in and it dissolves within that liquid. So both have a liquid. Finally, both do involve forces of attraction between molecules. And we need to break down that attraction in order to have either melting or dissolving. So those are the differences and similarities between melting and dissolving. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.